the episode called City on the Edge of, <laughs> Edge of Forever, first season episode, directed by Joseph Pivney and written by Harlan Ellison. Now, it really wasn't written by Harlan Ellison, was it? It was like story by. It was, I would say story by, and I think it would be true to say that Gene Roddenberry knew that he would have a feather in his cap if he got big names, Norman Spinrad, right? Theater Sturgeon, uh, Osimo, if he got these people to write for Trek and have it be in the credits. I mean, that would be a big thing, right? Yes. Uh, uh huh. And uh, okay, well, this episode was uh, actually uh, aired April 6, 1967, but the job was handed out back in like March of 66. What do you call that? What you flip out and you talk to people on? Communicator. The, communica the communicator. So Ahura is using both of the ones that you like. She has the one that opens more than 108. Did you know that in this episode? Oh, no, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, someone someone picked up on it. They said on one of them, it goes way past where it's supposed to go. And then they don't say it the way you do, but yeah. they notice that there's two different communicators. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I so if... there's the no balls and the balls on the ship. So, and then, uh, of course... Are we, Go ahead. where Where are you at? I'm I'm just I'm, looking oh, yeah. at, uh, I'm at 2705. I'm right on the lights off, yep. lights on. There we yeah. go. Wax on, wax off. I had yeah, a very so we're, we're, so we're still on the bridge of the ship with uh, yep. Bruce's notes right now. Yes. And uh, um, I made the same comment you did about the, uh, the ship is always exploding. The bridge is always exploding. Now, uh, I have to say that when I read my book, there are memos that are brought up where they discuss Bob Justman is the biggest. I think he has to do a lot with uh, estimating costs on stuff. And he brings up a lot about we've done this. Why is the ship you know, falling apart all the time? It's been brought up before. I have read this before and I think I've read it recently. And here is a perfect example about no fuses. Well, I do have to say, you know, ripples through time affect the ship differently. And so they don't have those kinds of fuses installed. That's true. So, so there you go. The, the, but you're right. So it went from high tech integrated circuitry or whatever we would expect to see in a 200 years from now to this incredibly awkward, uh, it wasn't even tubes at that time. I have no idea what that was. We saw yeah, that, that, I mean, if you look at it technically, it is impressive. If I look at it technically away from the storyline, I think it's impressive. You're right. Uh, it would be nice to see it somewhere else, but uh, I think that, you know, they did a lot of foreshadowing in this episode because I think he says to Sulu, keep on top of it, Sulu. Remember? Zero, three, five, zero, three minutes and 50 seconds. He says, stay on top of it, Mr. Sulu. There you go. So it was a little foreshadowing. Yeah. On there. Calls. Hold on there. Uh, at uh, at uh, two minutes and 26 seconds, uh, we got a stunt guy that falls for McCoy. Definitely. And, you can definitely tell that's a stunt guy. Yeah. He's yeah, in, exactly. in, in flight. Yeah. Even though exactly. later on, he's on his knees holding his gut. Yeah. No, definitely. You could definitely tell it's not, it's not, uh, McCoy, the uh, what's Doctor? What's McCoy's shoot? What's the actor's name? Uh, DeForest Kelly. DeForest Kelly. You can definitely tell it's not DeForest Kelly. Yeah, <laughs> if he wasn't there, right? If they just showed him looking and they don't show him pop up behind a rock where he's obviously there, wouldn't Seven that have been two. great? Huh? <laughs> Seven minutes, twenty-two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's like a little kid, right? I also, I see you. Yeah, I, I just, uh, it just makes my skin crawl. I, again, I'm like, this was such terrible blocking. If they would have just showed these two guys searching, looking for something, and and then later on you show them somewhere else, right? Then that would have been okay with me. But he's right there, and they they make a big deal. Like, these guys are so, they're like the, the wily coyote that can't catch the roadrunner. I mean, they're just so inept. And I'm like, yeah, I just can't. Search progressing, and it's like, uh, what did she say before that? There's nothing here. I'm gonna go on, you know. It, right. She says a line right before that, where before she says search progressing. Search progressing in city. 
and there it is. And the line, the line is so spot putting out waves and waves of time displacement, which we picked up a million, millions of miles away. Uhura is talking now back to the ship. Landing party to Enterprise. No sign of Dr. McCoy. There you go. Search, search progressing. There you go. There you go. And, and no think. sign. We're not really looking for him, but if we were, you know. So yes, yeah, so so what that are, thing about them looking for McCoy and uh, it's, it, it's just, it's. Cring, I, it, I cringe a little when I watch it. I cringe, well, every time. It doesn't change. Yeah, but, uh, it, it's not a good line. But There's watch a lot what, of lines in here that aren't good. <laughs> but it gets better at the end of this act. Uh, um, okay, so let's get to some what you have from. I like uh, your science. Here comes your science knowledge is obviously primitive. Here we okay, go. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get to that. Okay, let's is get that, to that the next scene? No, it's not. That you're talking about the uh, you're talking about the donut talking to Spock, right? Yeah. Okay, well we're not there yet. We're we're no. almost there. Yeah, we're right almost. there. We're we're at Would the cusp. We're at the cusp. We're, we're diving into it. Okay. At the cusp of the. Uh, Chime distortions? <laughs> well, yeah. So here we go. Erica, yeah. you're going to have to bleep me a few times because I don't know if I can hold back on this. Don't hold back. Okay, so here's the deal. I can understand why Captain Kirk in all future episodes, sorry guys, I'm giving it away if you haven't watched super uh, future episodes, skip past this by about five minutes. All future episodes, he blows the shit out of any kind of machine he blows out that that monster's head at the one where they're all utopian planet he blows the crap out of that so that they can start having sex and live like normal people he blows the crap out of every uh computer that he comes across nomad, to any planet nomad the spaceship he brings beams on board no, everything he yeah. just blows the crap out of it, right and this is why because he comes across this big donut that's this malfunctioning piece of arrogant crap that and and he just it just kind of puts kirk over the end this is the one this is the, the straw that broke the camel's back and this is why through all the rest of the series of star trek tos kirk goes crazy on any kind of machine and spock was a yes man you know hey that's a great idea let's just jump back in this stupid piece of crap that's been putting me down the whole time i've been down here and, and not even putting my timeline up but putting earth's timeline up and he can't even tell i'm a vulcan i mean come on come on uh he's very thoughtful and, and he's going well can you change it and i i said uh you know and when he says i cannot change the way i've been signed and but he before that says i'm my own beginning and my own ending and you kind of explain that although i just kind of you know i just washed over your explanation on that episode they set up the rules there were a lot of uh what do you call it uh, parameters exposition on what the rules were and they lived within those ridiculous to you as they may be going I, that was, it's ridiculous um good episode uh, <laughs> have we caught up to where we need to be um at, uh, at 11 52 19 are we where where do we need to be where you start where you can read your notes again. well you got the thing where i'm frightened uh and i think i got to that later i mean that was such a terrible line i'm frightened why did they oh, give that to her that is you know, wrong she yeah cannot say i'm yeah. frightened and she, i i wrote here this line is so she delivers it the way michelle nichols delivers it because she has to mm -hmm. with the parameters but it's a terrible line for her She's, she works on the bridge and she's saying, I'm frightened because the ship went away and the timeline is, uh, yeah. Plato's stepchildren. She says the same thing. I'm so frightened, Captain. I'm so very frightened. Uh, yeah. uh, Carbo might maneuver. Um, what's his name? Uh, um, the guy at the, at the, yeah. Hill. raising yeah. my voice back there. doesn't mean I was scared or couldn't do my job. I was thinking of scared. Yeah. And, and then finally in the deadly years, Kirk says, he was scared. He <laughs> saw a dead body and he ran out of the building and he was scared to death. Uh, I didn't like the Captain I'm, I'm Frightened uh, line. God, I, I don't see where you wrote it. I know where it is, but I don't see where you wrote that in there. But, you see but the I'm pic really glad. Do you see the pictures of them walking with the clothes in the basement? Yes. So And then Spock and Kirk 
Kirk, Kirk is like looking like he's talking to Spock and Spock is tucking in his shirt. Is that what you're talking about? 1582-17, right? Yep, the number is wrong. The picture is correct. Oh, yeah, 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 the first the first paragraph. Yeah, that's right, that's exactly right. I love that, and that's an Ellison, that's kind of like what Ellison wrote. It's really cool, I like that a lot. Uh, yeah, time is fluid, like and Ellison did did write that. I, I thought, wow, that's a, that's a cool way to look at time because what he's saying is time is linear, right? Time does go and have a flow that's in a certain direction. And really, you like you're saying, the divergent rivers or something, you can't really diverge it. It's still going to catch up to itself, and it's everything's kind of going to flow in a certain direction. And I like that idea. Uh, to me, that makes sense in time. You know, you know what I'm saying. Uh, uh, I'm fixing that number right now. It was oh, it's in use. Someone else is editing this. Uh, I did dyslexic. Uh, it's 1852 17. Okay, so I'll I'll uh, I think I'm out of it now. You could try it unless I'll you want. I'll it. get on another one. Try it now. I'm, yes, you're out. Nope, didn't you, someone else is editing. Oops. No, I'm out of it. Do you think Erica's in it? This, you know, this happened to me so much writing the notes that yeah. I got fed up today and created a new notebook that we have to go to for part two because I couldn't go in and edit anything. We it's should see if Erica's in it and see it and let her make sure she gets out of it or something. Oh, I, I can type right now. I can type. I got it. Okay, cool. Oh, must be sharing. 52. That was me then. 17. Okay, I changed it to 1852-17. There we go. Got it. Thank you. I'm going to try to get out of it. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to uh, Ellison's story versus this one. And where Ellison's makes so much more sense. Uh, it's a janitor that finds him in the basement. When they run and hide in the basement, it's a janitor. He's, he takes pity on him and gives him a job. Mm -hmm. Where Edith Keeler saying who's down there makes no sense because they didn't make any major noises or anything else. I, I, from, from how she heard them and came down there, I have no idea. They had a problem with Ellison's story saying it took them too long to get to meet Edith Keeler. But there was so many things in Ellison's story that, that pointed to her as being the, the, the part in the river that converged, yes. right? Yes. And so, so for her to just kind of come in the basement, they should have... They could have had a little bit of a bit. Now, I understand they're under time pressures. I understand that they're on this stuff and they have so many writers at this point and everyone's trying to put in their thing. And I love DC Fontana's enthusiasm about and her, you know, she she said she was hesitant to read right because she really liked uh, uh, Ellison. Right. So she didn't really want to touch this. And he was kind of sacred to her in a way because everyone loved his writing and stuff. But she kind of had a job to do so she did it but she really kind of got off on her stuff uh and they really kind of wanted him uh kirk to meet her sooner now if they would have done this as a two-part i think they could have followed the same time flow yeah, we're talking about a time travel movie and now i'm talking time you know uh and they could have and again i'll get off of the two-part but i really wish they would have done it as a two it would have been just a beautiful show um so but the janitor finds him and he takes pity on him and he gives him the job and he gives him the money so they do all of the stuff that they gave Edith Keeler or Joan Collins character to say it was another character saying it and it made sense to me because yeah someone that's a janitor is going to be in the basement cleaning up hey what are you guys doing here instead of her coming up from nowhere unless maybe she was they could have had her getting something from the basement and then she runs into him and says, hey, what are you guys doing here? It could have been written a little differently to make it a little more because I just didn't get how she just all of a sudden. Thank you, Spielberg. Steven Spielberg, the guys that came out and were surrendering and they shot him anyway, they were saying we're not part of Nazi Germany. We are uh, conscripts, basically. We were captured and forced mm -hmm. to fight for, for Germany, but we're not, we're mm -hmm. not that. Mm -hmm. and, and they said that uh, Steven Spielberg purposely didn't translate it, but it is part of the movie. And so you had that kind of flow of energy already happening in Nazi Germany and what was going on. You had enough people, Valkyrie, trying to kill Hitler. He wouldn't have been around that much longer. He was already falling apart. You had all these arrogant people in Germany. But to say that the whole world and the enterprise and everything would have been gone, you know, German Germans, they make some pretty damn good stuff. I mean, I have a couple BMWs and I tell you what, you know, they have, they make some excellent 
excellent things. They're, they're great engineers. We have some great stuff. So the Enterprise, if they really would have taken it, maybe Kirk wouldn't have been the captain because he's a little bit stupid. But the, the Enterprise would not have been blowing up in Sulu's face. Uh, you know, it would not have been affected by these time ripples as much. And they would have been kind of flying on and doing other things. So eh, whether or not they said Nazi Germany, someone said it's very tired and to stop using it as a, a reason to manipulate time. And I agree with them. So I think that I, I'd like to say, um, you know how uh, human psychology works. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of you see it once and the other person. The one person observes something and then they say, this happens all the time and it's only one time. Uh, yeah. I think that the uh, one of one reason might be for why someone says this is a tired story is because the, the kill Hitler thing is used a lot as an as a discussion for time travel. Hey, if you could go back in time and kill Hitler. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that there's a lot of time travel stories about uh, Hitler. But well, I, I think, think that the discussion uh, Nazi... exists all of the time when people talk about time travel. The the comment is, "What if you went back in time and killed Hitler?" That's a discussion. So I think when you discuss it a lot, then all of a sudden someone might say it's been in stories forever, and when in fact it may not be in a lot of stories at all. It's just a, a conversation piece about time travel. That could be, but I do see one where they have the Nazi zombies and stuff. And what? what? Yeah, there's a, a, this poster. It's always in my head. It's these Nazi zombies, right? And they're just, <laughs> I guess they just eat human flesh. I don't, oh, you okay. haven't seen that poster? Uh, I'm assuming yeah. that it's got to be like a time travel thing or, or Nazi Germany takes over and then they get hit by a plague. I don't know what it's about. Um, you haven't seen those posters. I don't think so. Yeah, it's you haven't seen those posters. Oh, man, I, I've see seen them. I've seen them a lot for a while. Let's see. Do I do I need to make a bunker? You, I think you do. There it is. Nazi zombies movie right here. All I start typing Nazi zombies, and there it is. Nazi zombie movie. <laughs> Dead Snow, 2009. I don't know what it's about, but uh, maybe they got frozen in, in the... I don't know what it's about, but I, I used to see the posters a lot for that thing. Uh, so anyway, uh, and we're getting kind of to the end of it because she does get killed. Uh, but the phaser again with Ellison, you know, the favor of, uh, phaser vaporizes the man. And you know that when McCoy comes across the time portal, yes. and and that was like an Ellison idea. Now it was so insignificant that that guy got phased, you know, and the phaser I guess got vaporized as well. But Ellison had it. It was someone that saves Captain. Kirk. I think he saves Captain Kirk's life, and so he jumps in front of the phaser, and he gets shot. But he was a, a World War One uh, paraplegic, and. So when they go across the time portal in Ellison's story, they said, hey, what about him? Well, he was insignificant. And, oh, and they, they go, were referring to the guy who took the phaser fire. Yes, so, for, uh, for Kirk. Okay. And, and they go, well, what about him? And, and Ellison's point was, it's so tragic, right? It's such a tragic, someone really sacrificed their body to fight in World War One, and they were insignificant, and 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 he, it's it's it he, that hits me right here in my chest that that is a tragic thing that we kind of value life in a different way. Where Edith Keeler, you know, she was very important to what happened as far as time goes on. So, so let me round out mine, and then we'll jump back to yours, or we can look at yours and then jump back to mine. However you want to do it. What do you What do you got? Um, I, okay. I, oh, you. You're wrapping up. You have some. You have some comments there, don't you? It looks like I have a few more here. It's just just a few. Hmm. Uh, I don't know why I said Kirk must know what to do. A time travel dilemma. I don't know why I wrote that. Uh, McCoy is getting better. Time to heal. It's a good time, right? He he was able to heal without all of this nonsense going on. He just kind of had his time, and he he got over it. And, they were talking about whether or not he would like fall in love with Edith Keeler, and there seemed to be that would have been a nice little storyline too. 
Uh, I don't know why I said a stupid ship's crew figuring out the future, Spock and Kirk. I mean, you know, uh, uh, God. Uh, so the ultimate sacrifice, when we talk about the ultimate sacrifice, I think a lot of people talk about it in our era right now, uh, the ultimate sacrifice, giving up your life for your country or giving up your life for something. When they're talking about Kirk's ultimate sacrifice, he gave up a loved one. So it's a totally different type of, oh, and that's what that woman said about this, why it made it such a great episode. I think she was just trying to get on the bandwagon of why this is a great episode. Because I told you, I tried to do research on why so many people thought this was a great episode. And she's like, well, he had to give up something for the greater good, right? Well, maybe. Um, it wasn't really Kirk. That, if, if Kirk had sacrificed himself, which I know you can't do because of the Star Trek series, right? That would have been an uh, ultimate sacrifice. But to give up someone else, eh, that's kind of a hard one to swallow, right? That would be like a Sophie's Choice, Sophie's Choice kind of dilemma, I would say. Uh, Uh, and then, and then a couple things. Uh, all right, guys, hate what? me all you want, hate me all you want, but I said, but let's just round out two things. Uh, I don't understand why Scotty goes, you were only just, you only just left a moment ago. Why is that relevant? You know, he should, it doesn't make sense that he would say, oh, cause he's, I know they're just filling, it's a line filler trying to give us a, a frame of reference, right? But I think they could have said it a lot better. So here's what I said, guys. All right. And this is me, has nothing to do with Bruce. Don't, you'll probably tell Bruce not to talk to him anymore. But I said, the end of a dumb episode. <laughs> Very clearly says, sets this up that she's going to that he saw her die uh -huh. and Kirk is not listening at all right and he says we know her future and he goes on on this little tirade about right. where they could go and we know that Spock saw her die. Andy was trying to say, but that's, I saw a different version. Right. But I think that the gap between him talking, uh, Spock ending and him talking is so long, drives me nuts because I keep thinking that the audience is going to miss the fact that Spock said something. I would rather see Spock, uh, Kirk cut him off mid sentence with the implied sentence. Hey, she has a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Every time I, I, I uh, watch this, I always think the audience is going to miss what the audience is much intel more intelligent than I am. But I couldn't think, <laughs> God damn it. Couldn't that have been tightened up where he talked over him so that you spot uh, Kirk is obviously not listening to Spock. No, but it's so far apart that it's like, it, uh, I don't believe it. Yeah, he was listening, and he's still talking uh, about his other problem. Well, where's the dissonance? Yeah. Uh, what else? So got? Kirk was still being hopeful there, right? He was just being—he didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to hear it. Well, okay, I guess. I guess. Thank you. I'll, I'll take it like that. Really, I just want them to tighten up that cut there, or I mean that scene, and put him over, talk over box. So it's obvious. Yeah. He yeah. Can't. yeah. Sentence. Yeah. All right. He he knew what was said and he's keeping on going with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I can live with that. Thank you. That's that's kind of the way I took it. That he's just like he's kind of, you know, hearing what he wants to hear and ignoring what he doesn't want to hear. Yeah. 3329. I think the exposition is proper. Um the whole discussion explains what the dilemma is. It explains the setup. It uh, explains the parameters that the story is going to operate within. So to me, it sets up how the the uh, time travel will work too, uh, because they mentioned the eddies and currents. Hey, I'll focus on this thing. Uh, Spock says, 
Captain Edith Keeler is the focal point in time we've been looking for, the point that both Lee and Dr. McCoy have been drawn to. And then they go on for a few more lines and they're talking about this Eddie current thing that you said Ellison put in. Uh, right. And I think that sets up how this uh, time travel thing is going to work. And I thought it, was, it, it sounded really, I thought it was really good that they discussed it. Did, it wasn't did you watch, did you see the Ellison or read the Ellison one? I did. Uh, remind me, tell me what. Uh, so what, what the, I guess apparently the Guardian of Forever told him some clues. And so Spock oh. was looking the 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 star, the sun on a bright blue background. He says something, the Guardian says that to him. And then so when Spock sees Edith Killer, actually he sees her on the street giving a speech. And he sees that she's wearing a brooch that's like the bright sun on her cape that's a bright blue or velvet blue yeah, uh, yeah. thing so spock puts it together and he says oh this is her this is this is the this is where the current meets this is where we all meet and that's where he puts it together and then this is kind of the the next gen i mean the original series take on that is this this is her she is that she is that focal point right there but that's, but ellis yeah. and here they do it at yeah. uh Spock determines that there's two outcomes on his little tricorder. That's right. That she is the focus. And so Spock gets that she is the focal point here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I like, uh, I like Kirk's look when Spock says, when he's about to leave the room, what, what, what are you going to do if he does, she does have to die? And he looks towards, uh, close to the camera. And it reminds me of him in court martial when he says, but that's not the way it happened. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a real good, it's a real good, ca uh, Shatner moment when he had, he doesn't respond to, uh, Spock. He, he just looks and thinks, I mean, he doesn't comment. Right. Yeah. Very, it's a very good Shatner thing. Uh, and then uh, the next uh, act, we've got uh, the first shot of Rodin. He steals, he's waiting for the milk delivery guy to leave and uh, rips off some milk. Uh huh. And then and there's your Terminator appearance moment, which is funny because we were talking about Terminator earlier. Yes, right. And here, this is how McCoy appears. He jumped through the donut. And yeah. we are there with Kirk and Spock before he arrives. As far as this story concerned, I, I can tell that we diverged quite quite a bit with the story. I mean, you're uh, as as we said, the reason we're doing this was Star Trek fans, right? I'm uh, I'm an outsider here. What overall, I want to know what your your feeling, your thoughts, your ideas about this episode are. I mean, you've given us some ideas, but I don't know your full. What did you think about this episode as a whole? I created some notes. Whoa. I created some notes while you were talking. Oh, okay. Good, good, uh, good, good. Um, without these notes, great episode, uh -huh. time travel, yeah. went back, fixed the problem, could have yeah. ruined the world and the Nazis took over. Great. Kirk solved the issue, thought ahead, went through the time portal and they went back beforehand and waited and Oh, he, it was, it's uh, heart wrenching. He had to lose somebody, uh, that he cared for to solve the, the, for the greater good. What's that called in the later movies, uh, the Star Trek movies, uh, um, uh, the needs, oh, yeah. the, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. one. That's right. That's right. And yeah. he sacrificed and he yeah. sacrificed a lot in my opinion. Uh, wonderful episode and the notes that while you were commenting, I think I want probably wanted to say something. Uh, hypo. Oh, you mentioned he got it. Hypo. And come on, the ship was jostling and he gets it in the gut. And my comment was accidents happen. Okay. <laughs> accidents. Yeah. He didn't mean to be there on his knees helping. No. Okay. Uh, good, ep uh, good episode. I'm so glad that you uh, like it the way I do and that we agree on so many points. It's I fabulous. like that too. <laughs> I, I like that too. Like we're, we're totally like together on this one you know insane yeah oh my god <laughs> are, are you gonna give this 
I have to a say a real rating. I have to say to you, thank you for listening. I mean, honestly, I don't know if I could listen to myself talk about this, but I really appreciate that you took the time to listen to me and hear me out on on my critique of this episode. Twice. Twice, I mean, you're right. We spent right. an hour on on Saturday know, talking about this. Just I know. Cuz oh, it was but it was, I was really good to hear. But the thing that you did on Saturday was encourage me to go ahead and do this one because I was hesitant, right? Mm. So so thank you for that. I mean, really, I I'm glad and and it was kind of nice to put it together and to go over it and to, you know, get my thoughts together and stuff. I'm glad you did it because uh you gave me food for thought. I am not admitting to anything. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying yet how much you swayed me on stuff. The two part thing really got to me. Um, uh, there were a couple other comments you made on some stupid, like that that Spock was being spoken to by the Guardian. That didn't occur to me at all. Uh, uh, you mentioned a couple of trivia items in there that I didn't know about, the communicator one and something else that was even more significant. I thought, hey, yeah, great. So I can't wait wait to watch what you. Uh, <laughs> put together. No, it's Erica. I can't wait what Erica <laughs> puts together and how you make this because uh, I'm going to be watching this. Yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. So what's your rating on this one? Where are you? Uh, where is this at? Oh, yeah, this is a this is a good solid uh, uh, 85, 86, 87. Uh, it's wow. Good. It's good. Wow. Uh, it's a good fun. It's a good story because it's time travel. I mean, that's exciting stuff. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, okay. That's so, great. So, so I don't know. I, I said 85, 86, 87. I think it's a maybe six and a half or something. Well, I'll give it an 86. 86? Is that uh, what you said? It's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. Um, it's uh, easy. 80, 87. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll take the high. Yeah, 87. That's, that's great. That's really good. Okay, uh, now now tell me, based on dagger of the mind how how do you get around all of this frustration with what happened with the story and and stuff can you are you gonna separate well, I, I said uh, the, i think the love story part of it was superb i i do like the way they did that i could see so much of that in life as it happens uh as i said the nazi thing kind of jostled me and time travel definitely jostles me even ellison as his story you know even though i like his story a lot better and I like the way he approaches it and all of that a lot better than the way he approached this. And I honestly, the thing that drug it down for me a lot was first of all, the accidents on board the Enterprise and that they didn't just handle it. Like they could have handled it real quick, but then would there have been a story? I think they could have written it a lot better at the beginning, made it a whole lot. There could have been a nicer way. Now I know they're trying to gel the crew of the Enterprise and make it even though we're how many episodes are we in 28 episodes right isn't this yes. 28 yeah 20 so we're 28 episodes and they're still trying to get the crew together so they wanted to give some of their crew they didn't and they talk about this they didn't want a lot of different people in on this action for the enterprise so which i think actually would have helped in my opinion i really 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 did not like the way the donut talked to spock or talked about things and then it talked down and, and couldn't get its own shit together, right? So it's like someone telling you when you're on a football team how to play football and they, they run the wrong uh, patterns all the time, right? You're just like, <laughs> how are you telling me how to run my patterns when you can't get your own down, right? So that's kind of how I felt about the donut. Uh, so those two things, and I think there was just too many people that tried to write on this thing. I, I think that they could have given up some of the stuff like the, the the what they tried to put the humor in there they could have given that up to make this quality of the story more like you said i love what you say a lot of times when we're talking about star trek where you say layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer they could have made this such a layered beautiful story that made a big impact i think rather than the way they did it it just kind of to me got out of control it was a mess and that being said, I, if I went back in time, and if I went forward in time, wait, okay, if I'm right now, and I'm just kidding, uh, I'm gonna, I, I've been thinking about it, and the number that's always rattling around in my head, I don't know why it's a 25. Gotcha. Our 
resolution, which is 640 by 320 or something like that, in a corner at its native resolution without stretching it or anything. And then the other stuff was high quality from where whatever sources. Yeah. I thought it was cool that our recording happens to be small, that it was actually kept in the corner and small. I think that was a great idea. Wow, yeah, I think she's doing a great job. I, you know, I got to get uh, this other guy online with us to see about the animation stuff, you know, with yeah. us sitting there in front. I, I totally forgot about him, and I but I thought we were going to cover this. So maybe I'll call him tomorrow anyway. His name's Harrison. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, I need to give, I'll send Erica an email tomorrow, and then we'll get Harrison on the line. Probably just do a little quickie with Harrison and have him look at it and stuff like that. Okay. Well, I'd like to see more of that where our video is the native resolution and not stretched. And yeah. then all our yeah. other stuff is the big stuff in the background and we're just the talking head kind of thing, maybe in either corner. Maybe she bounces it between corners or yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe Bruce has one side and Kevin has another side where we appear when we talk, but at it's so if we're for recording at a quarter of the resolution of, of 2K, well, then we yeah. occupy approximately a quarter of the frame size. Right. You know you have your full name on here. So do you want her to screen it out? Oh, yeah. Uh, Erica, as I said in one of my email messages, thank you for um, stripping out <laughs> these <Zoom's laughs> names. <laughs> she can have mine there. I mean, it's, it's fine. But yeah. So, oh, so Erica, just run a script that automatically takes off those 12 pixels or whatever it is off of every video. By, by the way, uh, are you going to have to watch that first one? We got to give her our notes. You know, she did the time code on it, right? Uh, what do I, what do we have to do? We have to watch it and then uh, send her the, our edits where she needs to cut out the stuff. You know, I've already told her like one little piece just to cut, but I'll go through it on the time. She's got the time coding on there now. Overnight. That's right. She posted it with the two hour thing. You got yeah. booted off. Remember when she had was only had 14 minutes left? And yeah. Then we had this conversation and then it ended. And of course, we were already kind of at the end. And then you said, hi, right, bye. Well, she uh, started it up again and I joined her again. We oh, seriously? Oh, nice. Yeah. So we so uh, Erica, you and I, we were, you were showing me how you uh, added more and she says, well, which side should I put it on? And I said, well, I put it in the lower left. So it's kind of like uh, YouTube. And she said, mm, I like it over here on the right. So she put it on the right and she found a recording or a time code that was longer than an hour. And she did it right there while I was wor watching her. I mean, wow. I did wow. my stuff and she says, she, she put the hour thing in and I saw it and she scrubbed over to it and she says it ends at an hour. And I said, you're done. Don't worry about it. The first one you got an hour in there and it's a two hour video okay but we got time codes for it move on to the next thing no she didn't give up she found a two hour deal and she popped it in and i was just blown away because it's like that's exactly what we wanted i think she i think she thought that erica you the way i thought you were um asking is you want thought that we wanted the time codes to be like my example in the prince video with all the different numbers i had oh yeah, yeah. time yeah. codes different yeah. stuff no 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 and then when when I said just one and it's okay, it was it was spot on and two hour time code in there. And we didn't spend much time while you were gone. Great, great. Know, maybe another 15 minutes and and she was already, Eric, you were already into it and done with the time code thing. That was, that was cool. That's Good wonderful. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. That's great. Okay, so, so I, yeah, so now I need now to watch gotta, it. Now you got to watch it and just splice it. So I already was looking at it and took some stuff out, but I got to jot my notes for her so that she can see where to cut and where I'd like her to cut. And then you could review my cuts, you know, some, some stuff when, when we're looking up, I said like looking up and reading notes and stuff, she doesn't need that in there. We could just cut those out. Can you help me get the URL to that so that I could take care of that? Uh, how, how did we get that? Or can you get it? To me? She, she sent it to us. So let me just see if I can pull it up real quick. I am communication challenged, Erica. Sorry, I'm I'm like the, I'm like the cobbler's kids' shoes, you know. Am I? I'm terrible. I go to, at work. They say I put it in the calendar, you know, and shared calendar and stuff. And I rely on someone else to tell me where I'm supposed to be. Is that lazy? No. What's that? What, say that again. 
I'm sorry. That lazy that I don't know where I need to be and I can't read a calendar and I can't do my mail. No. I'm no. Confused. No. It's not lazy. I'm embarrassed. Eric, uh, let's see if this is the one. Oh, this is the one where she cut it together for us, which is not right. But is this the one that she sent to us? And why was that? What, uh, that was significant. And I didn't know that until just before our episode tonight, why that was uh, significant. Coy can get to his uh, little uh, thing. Oh, yeah, that's so. oh, that's great. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't notice it. And I didn't go back and have the no balls and balls. So that tail has no balls. <laughs> because there are two kinds. And there were like little boards with triangles. <laughs> 